I do not want you to go gently into that good night. Let's fight aging together. Here I'm going to share my top tips for fighting aging and increasing your health span as a percentage of your lifespan. Before I jump into my top tips for fighting aging, I want to share a quick story with you. I'm having lunch with the CEO of a large public company and he says to me, you know, Emmy, we all just get older and that's just the way it is. And I'm like, no, no. And just earlier that month, I had won the AAU North American Championships for bodybuilding, for physique, for women of all ages. And that same weekend, I was silver medalist in the US Masters Championship for track and field for the 100 and the 400. So you just can't tell me that I'm going to go gently into that good night. And you know, he backed off. But here I want to share with you, how can I actually fight aging and how can you do it too? So we're going to jump into very quickly the process of aging and some of the components, because that'll help you understand why these tips really do fight aging. So first of all, we all have a lot of stress, right? We have mental stress, we have physical stress, but some of the stress is good. If we don't stress ourselves at all, we wouldn't exercise. Exercising is good for us in moderation. I may go a little beyond that moderation, by the way. And things like intermittent fasting also are good for us. And that's a different type of stress on your body in some ways, and it's a relaxing way in others. When I was training for an Ironman, I was exercising so much and you think well, exercise is great, right? And that was the moment where that good stress became bad stress, right? Because all of a sudden I was training so much that the training no longer worked. I was getting more tired and less fit. And this is the thing about stress, both mental and physical. A little bit of it actually helps us. It energizes us. It gives us life. A lot of it ages us. And so it's important to understand the type of stress and the amount of stress. So we have mental stresses like worries and thinking about other people and emotions. And we have physical stress, such as having an operation, getting a virus, getting sick, going to the hospital, way too much exercise like I was doing in that Ironman. So there's all kinds and you just want to kind of be aware of that stress. And we'll talk about how to handle it in a way that you become more able to deal with stress and therefore it doesn't age you as quickly. The second thing I want to talk about is mitochondria. Oh my God. <laughs> like this is not a biology lesson. No, 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 no. But these are the cells that basically give us energy. So when you say, gosh, you know, as I'm getting older, I don't have as much energy. It's important to figure out where that energy comes from. That energy comes from ATP, which is inside your mitochondria. And so as we age, yeah, our mitochondria are going to get older. Our DNA is going to get a little frayed, kind of like the ends of my hair <laughs> and chronic disease increases. So what we want to do is really think from the cellular level, how can we have healthy mitochondria? How can we protect our DNA? How can we look at it from the source so that the thing that is giving us energy, our mitochondria, that's giving us our ATP to go bounding around and do bodybuilding competitions and run and chase the kids, that thing, we want to make sure that we are giving it all the fuel it needs and not harming it. So we're going to jump into that right now. All right. So there is something called the vagus nerve. I know more biology and that nerve starts at the back of your head and it connects your brain with your gut, your lungs and your heart. Why should you care? Because this is the mind gut connection that allows you to calm down. And so your vagus nerve is that is the freeway. That is the information superhighway that is telling you telling everything to calm down. So let's say you have a stressful moment, right? We're all going to have them. The difference between someone who is resilient and someone who isn't 
And the difference between whether that stress will aid you or whether it won't is how quickly your vagus nerve can recalm yourself down. It's not that you never get stressed out. It's that when stress comes, you are able to bounce along and calm right down. And that is measured in how quickly your heart rate comes down, how quickly your breathing rate comes down, and how quickly your gut gets back into doing what it should be doing, which is digesting. And so how can we improve our vagus nerve? I mean, that's a nerve inside our body, right? Well, it's something actually called vagal tone. So your ability to calm down, to slow down your heart rate, slow down your lungs, your breathing rate, and kickstart your gut to have it be happy and more relaxed is meditation, walking outside, connecting with friends, say having a nice chat. I mean, all these things sound great, right? And the more that you do them, the more that you're increasing your ability to calm down. And if you can just have some stress come and calm down right away afterwards, then stress doesn't age you as much. Isn't that awesome? If you're enjoying this so far, why not subscribe and get more of these videos coming to you and you won't miss a single one. Plus you'll get exclusive access to my newsletter. So I hope you do and I hope you're enjoying this so far. All right, so we've talked about the mind and how it connects down to the body and allows you to calm down. And that's called the vagus nerve and vagal tone is your ability to calm down using meditation, walking, and your own sense of yourself. The next thing we're gonna cover is nutrition. Nutrition, aging, are you kidding me? Yes, the number one villain food, and I call these things villains, that's for sure, but food, I don't know if they're really even food anymore, they have so much chemicals in them. So sugar is the top villain. And sugar now has been shown to cause hardening of the arteries similar to smoking. Yeah, I just said that, similar to smoking. And so one way that you can decrease physical stress on your body is to avoid fast foods, junk foods, and sugar. Sugar is the worst, and I know you can do it. Now there's a really interesting thing that happens with sugar and stress, which I'm just gonna just take a little side into, which is that when you get stressed out, cortisol goes up, that pushes up your insulin, and then your insulin is actually looking for some sugar to digest, right? And so all of a sudden you want sugar right at the moment where sugar is the main thing you want to avoid. So how do you deal with this? How do you try to avoid these processed foods that have sugar in them, sugar in and of itself, how do you avoid them when the moment that you're the most stressed is the moment where you really feel like you need them? Well, an interesting thing about these cravings is they normally only last 10 to 15 minutes. And so you can just take 10 minutes and go on a walk, distract yourself, pay attention to something else, try not to think about that sugary thing that you want and get that vagal tone working for you again get centered again and move on. All right, so moving on to the fifth tip, intermittent fasting. Johns Hopkins has said that intermittent fasting may add years to your life, years. Everybody's been talking about it, but how do you do it? How is it? So, and then the other thing is, isn't breakfast the most important meal of the day? So why would I fast in the morning? Well, I'll answer both of those at the same time. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day because it breaks your fast. It's just not necessary to have breakfast at seven in the morning. You can have it at noon. And so often people will pick a six to eight hour eating window. And then if you wanna have coffee or something like that in the morning, as long as you do it without any carbohydrates that'll spike your insulin, then it's you're good to go. Now, why? Why would anybody intermittent fast, right? Well, there's something called autophagy. I know, more biology. And what it does is it goes around and cleans out your kind of semi unhealthy cells, some of your dead cells, etc. And it only does this when you're not digesting. So it's got a chance to do it at night, but if you give it more time, let's say you have an eight hour eating window and therefore there's 16 hours where you're resting your digestive system. All of that time, then you can be cleaning things up, relaxing your digestive system and getting it more healthy. That's really the reason to intermittent fast is to have that healthy gut. 
because then when our vagus nerve comes down and connects and communicates with our gut, it's communicating with a very healthy gut that is able to support us in dealing with stress. And the final tip for fighting aging is movement. I have this crazy story. I was running in Paris. I know it's always a story about running, but I was running in Paris and I had this huge crash and I fell and I was like trying to catch myself and I didn't catch myself. And so I fell and I fell hard and I couldn't get up, couldn't get up. And a woman came and found me and she said, did I want help getting a cab? And I thought I'll just, get over to that bench. So she lifted me, helped lift me up and got me over to the bench. And I first kind of used my vagal tone to explore whether I felt like there was anything really hurt within me. And then I got up and I started walking just very lightly. And as I did, my body just started healing itself. It's, it's just this amazing feeling. And it's, a, you know, it's not some kind of woo woo moment or something. It's just, your body is so resilient. And that's really what I want to leave you with. Our bodies are so resilient. If we just let them serve us and let your body serve you so that you can age gracefully and slowly with a great health span. So I want to hear from you what your takeaways are from this video. And is there anything that you're going to change about the way that you handle stress, maybe adding intermittent fasting, some more movement into your life? There are so many miracles that are just within us waiting to come out. I hope you like this video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and check out my other videos to join the best conversations on your health. You can find me in these channels on social media.